Hello everyone, I'm Georgia and this is The Sound of Georgia. Well, today, the day that I am filming this, it is Alexander Hamilton's birthday. So of course we have to talk about him. There definitely seem to be a lot of weird theories about the man. And no, I'm not just talking about the affair. I can't tell exactly how old he would be turning today, because we don't know the year he was born. There are a lot of question marks surrounding several things in this man's life. You know all those top 10 videos. There could be a top 10 conspiracy theories about Alexander Hamilton list with all the craziness that happened in his life. There's a theory that he was actually Washington's son. I don't think so. Or that he was part black. Nope. But we're not talking about those ones because talking about real people is complicated. But the one I'm going to be talking about today is the one that bleeds over into the musical. We're talking about Lance. I talked a bit about this in one of my other videos, but this video is going to focus solely on this. I guess this one is more musical focused, but it does have its roots in history. For those who don't know, Lance is the ship name for the hypothetical fan-created relationship between Alexander Hamilton and John Lawrence. But you will find every other fangirl having as their OTP. And for those who are confused, a ship is the name for when you pair two characters in a usually romantic relationship. And I'm 99% certain that Lambs is probably the biggest ship in the fandom. And I think that's down to three reasons. We'll talk about the other two in a minute, but let's start with the theory side of this. There are theories that these two might have actually had a relationship in real life. And yes, I mean a romantic one. The letters he wrote to Lawrence were rather flirtatious, to say the least. Hamilton's son said once, quote, there was a deep fondness and friendship which approached the tenderness of feminine attachment. His grandson said at one point that there was, quote, a note of romance in their friendship quite unusual even in those days. Then in the Chenna biography, he says that Alexander probably did have something of an adolescent crush on Lawrence. But what is all that without some proof? Which brings us to the letters. I'm sure plenty of you have heard this one. Cold in my professions, warm in friendships, I wish my dear Lawrence it might be in my power by action rather than words to convince you that I love you. You know it's serious if Alexander Hamilton wants to do it with more than just words. But if you've watched but if you've watched the interview between Emma Watson and Lynn, he talks about the letter that Alexander wrote Lawrence telling him what he wanted in a wife. That's the same letter. That's all part of the same letter. Basically the letter seems to go from flirting with Lawrence to this is what you've been missing and I'm pissed at everybody to I need to find a wife, this is what I'm looking for to if you can't find one, please put an ad out They'll be lining up for, I kid you not, quote, the prize I am. Then there's an 18th century innuendo for something, and then basically the letter finishes with, I've just been procrastinating so I can keep writing to you. XO XO Hammy. <laughs> so that's one weird letter. Now with all that said, it seems like this was not an uncommon way to talk to your platonic male buddies back then. So I don't know whether everything I've just said overcomplicates it or oversimplifies it. TLDR, these guys wrote love letters to each other and people have wondered about their relationship ever since. Now that is just all the background and the setup for the ship that emerged when the musical came out. Given that in real life we don't know what really happened and these are, well, real people who really existed, I'm not going to comment on the real life applications of this, we're just going to be talking about the musical. All I can say about real life is... So all of that I think makes up probably a third of the reason why Lambs is so popular. So let's get on to the other two. Fandoms really seem to love gay ships. You pull up fanfiction for a big enough fandom and one of the biggest ships will usually be a same-sex relationship between the protagonist and someone else. Usually his best friend or his archenemy. 
And the third reason, Anthony Ramos is freaking gorgeous. Jessie is one lucky girl. Talked about this plenty of times before, but because of the diverse and unique casting of Hamilton, every company looks completely different from every other company in a way that companies of most other shows do not. Just as an example, here are some images of the many ladies that have played Glinda in Wicked over the years, and now here are some images of ladies who have played Eliza over the years. And I use ladies as an example because they're more likely to look even similar than the men will. The men can usually get away with looking a bit different because they don't always have to wear wigs. Then here's two casts of Hamilton lined up, next to two casts of Wicked lined up. I'm just using that because it's my other favourite show. The Hamilton companies definitely look a lot different from the companies of any other show. So I would say for the vast majority, when people are thinking of Hamilton's, Alexander Hamilton and John Lawrence, they're not thinking about them so much as they are thinking about Lynn as Alexander Hamilton and Anthony as John Lawrence. Because of how diverse the casting is, you're more likely to latch onto one particular actor than you would in other shows. And because the OBC is, well, the OBC, it's kind of first come first served. And especially now that the movie's out. So I think Anthony's gorgeousness definitely has an impact on why this ship is so popular. And just as a little extra point to that, if what we see in the movie is any indication of how Anthony usually played that role, oh my god, he plays it so gay. As of recording this video, there is a clip of the story of tonight from the movie. I will leave it linked in the down below. It is basically two minutes of Anthony eye flirting with Lynn, which I guess is kind of a good place to start with my feelings on it. Well, for one, I hate ship names. I just do. Ship, mostly because the ship names are an amalgamation of the two characters' names, and I can't think of a ship name like that for my OTP that doesn't make me want to gag. And of course, when I say OTP, I mean these guys. When it comes to Hamilton, Lambs is not my OTP. I'm Team Alex and Eliza. I like Lambs more as a thing. But I'm not going to push Eliza to the side because Alexander and Lawrence were meant to be. No, that's not the way I see it. My headcanon as far as these two characters and their relationship goes is this. My headcanon Alexander is bisexual because that's part of the overall real life theory between these two. Alexander has the slightest hint of a crush on Lawrence. Lawrence, on the other hand, is totally head over heels in love with him before they've even spent 24 hours together. Again, the clip of story of tonight is linked in the down below, but yeah, and this isn't the only time it happens. But the reason I don't say completely platonic on Alex's side, because there are a few tiny moments from Alexander's side. Look at the way they walk off together. And I mean, how awkward did he look at the wedding? Obviously, the only thing I have to go on here is the movie, but the OBC is my Hamilton cast. Sorry Hamilton Australia, I love you and I can't wait to see you, but I don't think they're gonna replace the OBC in my brain. And I guess that's sort of the way I like this ship. I do have a lot of fan art saved on my computer that is Lambs-esque. But it's a lot more subtle and a lot more, for lack of a better word, jokey. Honestly, I don't know how to classify my feelings on Lambs. Again, looking at it strictly through the musical, because I'm not going to go into history, I don't think anything happened between these two. But I do think their relationship was a little more than platonic, especially on Lauren's side. Oh, I don't know whether I would say I outright guns and ship these two, and my headcanon is that nothing actually happened between them, but I definitely on some level love the idea of this ship. The clip I'll leave the link to down below is Tomorrow There'll Be More of Us, aka the scene that's not on the album 
So, spoilers if you haven't seen the show or watched the movie or anything like that and have only listened to the album, but Philip isn't the only one who died for Alexander. And right after the Theodosia, there's a moment where Lawrence has died. I mean, we all know he died. World with White Enough mentions that. But there's a moment right before non-stop where Alexander gets to find out that he died. It's heartbreaking. And considering I think one of the best scenes in the show regarding Lynn's acting is the Theodosia. That's one big transition. And I still don't know exactly how to label my feelings on this ship, but I think I've got through all my feelings. So let me know what do you think in the comments. What are your feelings on this ship? Do you see these characters in the musical being destined for each other even at the cost of Eliza? Or do you think the love between them was nothing more than platonic? Or are you somewhere in the middle like me that doesn't know exactly how to classify it all? So happy birthday Alexander Hamilton. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my video next week. So long for well!